Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Harrington. I'm the chief deputy here at the Pasco Sheriff's Office. So first of all, I just want to preface um, our comments this evening by saying none of this had to happen. Um, you'll see during the course of uh, our comments tonight that the deputy sheriff that was involved in this incident gave strong verbal commands and instructions throughout the entire incident. Had the suspect just listened to what the deputy had said, none of this would have occurred and we would not be here today talking about an officer-involved shooting. So essentially what occurs is that at about 5.30 p.m., the deputy sheriff is on patrol. He identifies who he believes to be an individual that is wanted for strang uh, battery by strangulation. Uh, this individual, deputy believes to be um, one with an extensive criminal history to include multiple felonies of violence directed against law enforcement. So the deputy sheriff stops at the 7-Eleven on US-19, New York Avenue. He walks over to the suspect and he starts engaging in a conversation and he starts asking him questions and he asks them to come over to him. So in the interim, the um, suspect tries to ignore the deputy and he's over by his vehicle. The deputy continues to walk over to him, engage in further conversation, and ultimately, the suspect turns and initiates a violent physical confrontation with the deputy. At that point in time, the deputy um, calls for a backup. The fight turns into one that the struggle goes inside the motor vehicle, and the suspect then decides that he's going to drive away from the scene with the deputy inside. And at that point, the deputy's then fighting for his life. During the course of this incident, the deputy sheriff continues to yell. He continues to give commands to the suspect to stop, to stop, stop the car repeatedly. And at, uh, during the course of this interaction, the deputy takes out his taser. He deploys his taser multiple times and uh, the suspect continues to drive. At one point in time, a, a uh, witness has told us that they saw the uh, deputy sheriff's uh, legs hanging out of the vehicle in that the suspect drove away from the scene recklessly. So the deputy, being in a life-threatening situation, felt that he had no other, um, you know, he had no other course of action available to him, and he was forced to shoot the suspect. And as a result, the suspect died of his wounds. The suspect, in the operation of the motor vehicle, they were able to negotiate it off the side of the road. And the deputy sheriff, um, as trained, like all other deputy sheriffs at the Pasco Sheriff's Office, uh, immediately started to render aid. He uh, attempted to provide uh, chest seals and the other deputies that arrived on the scene attempted to do the same thing. And at that point, it became uh, clear that the, uh, the suspect was in distress and he was transported to the hospital. And then the FDLE uh, who was with us um, can talk about some of the details with that. So again, the, uh, this is something that did not have to occur. The uh, deputy tried to de-escalate it the deputy tried to use um, different techniques to, uh, to mitigate the problem that was taking place. The suspect chose to engage in a course of uh, conduct that required that the deputy sheriff um, had to defend himself with deadly force. So as I had mentioned earlier when we started this, this did not have to occur. The actions that the, uh, the suspect took um, necessitated that the deputy sheriff take uh, other actions to save his life and protect himself from further harm. So with that, I will turn it over to the FDLE. And this is uh, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, uh, Megan Palumbo. Good evening. Again, it's Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Megan Palumbo with FDLE. We responded to a call request from Pasco Sheriff's Office to help investigate a deputy involved use of force. Uh, this is one of many services FDLE provides across the state to approximately 250 agencies. This is in the very early stages of the investigation. We are still processing the crime scene tonight. Uh, we have several witness interviews to do, as well as a deputy interview and a lot of di digital evidence to um, examine. We are glad everyone is safe tonight and the deputy is okay, but there is no current threat to the community at this time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are you able to share that suspect's name at this time? So at this point, uh, the suspect hasn't been positively identified, so we're going to wait for the FDLE to share that when they deem that it is appropriate. Did the, the deputy go into the 7-Eleven with the intention of arresting the uh, wanted suspect if he just run into the suspect? 
So the deputy was on patrol. Um, the person that he identified had been known to us as somebody that we were seeking actively. There was a criminal uh, charge he was wanted. And so the uh, deputy sheriff approached him. He was by his car um, at the uh, gas pumps over at the 7-Eleven. So he didn't actually go inside the store itself. It was outside by his vehicle. And you guys uh, you confirmed that it was the one that man that you were looking for with, with the strangulation. So we haven't positively identified the person yet, so um, we can't we can't say that one way or the other. Can you describe the vehicle he was in? I don't have that information. Over the course of how many minutes did this take place? Uh, approximately a minute and a half. How far did the car actually get out uh, during that altercation inside the vehicle? I don't have the exact distance for that. But you say the deputy was actually inside, completely inside? Yes, he was actually, according to a witness, he was inside the car struggling with the uh, suspect and trying to, um, trying to de-escalate, and then he had to use his taser inside the car as the suspect chose to drive away at a high rate of speed, and the deputy was actually, his legs were uh, hanging out of the car. About the driver's side or passenger side? Driver's side. The car was moving, deputy's hanging out on the outside? The term they used that he was driving recklessly. So, yeah, it was all on the passenger side. That's where the fight ended up um, falling inside the car in the driver's seat. So that is where the driver took off and the deputy sheriff was fighting with him to uh, try to take him into custody. How many shots were fired? I don't have that information exactly. Do you know how fast the car was going? I don't know that. Is the deputy now on standards ministry to flee event that's still ever may know? So at this point, it's common in something like this. What we'll do is when you're involved in an officer involved shooting, you'd go on administrative leave immediately. And so the important thing for us is that he's okay. And, uh, you know, we'll, do, we'll wait until the FDLE does their investigation. That deputy suffered no injuries. I'm sorry? That deputy suffered no injuries. So I don't know the extent of those injuries. I, he's getting checked. And so I don't know what that, the outcome of that evaluation was. How did the car come to the south? Uh, deputy shot the driver and then the car went over to the side of the road and the driver was no longer pushing on the accelerator. And then the deputy was able to get out one, once it came to a uh, stop and that's where he rendered the aid on the side of the road. Was the deputy wearing a body cam? Yes, he was. So you're reviewing all that good stuff? Yes, and we'll evaluate that and we'll make it available. Um, we'll we'll uh, coordinate with the FDLA and when we notify um, next of kin, things of that nature, we'll get that information out to you right away. Ruxin, how long was the suspect wanted? Most recently, I think it was the last couple of days that it came out. About a week. Uh, what's your overall reaction? It's a bad. Life is all about decisions. And so this suspect decided that he was going to try to fight with the deputy sheriff. He decided to engage in a course of conduct that put the deputy's life in jeopardy. The deputy reacted to the decisions and the actions that the suspect took. And uh, life is about decisions. And so the, the deputy sheriff decided that he was going to go home tonight. And so uh, that's, my, that's my assessment of what took place tonight. The other thing, do you know where the shooting took place? They shot him through chest in a specific area of the body. That's something for the FDLE to talk about during the course of their investigation. Do you have an age of the suspect? Suspect's not been positively identified yet. So we'll leave that for the FDLE to share that information when they have that. How long do you expect U.S. 19 to shut down? Until the investigation is completed and the FDLE thinks that they can uh, release the scene. Couple hours? Don't know. All right, any more questions? Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Paul. Yeah. Hey, can you step out of the car, please? Step out of the car now. What's what's the matter? Step out what's of the car. On? Step out of the car. What's going on? Oh, what's the problem? Get out of the car now! Get out of the fucking car! Get out of the fucking car now! Get out of the fucking car! <laughs> Get out of the fucking car now! Get out of the fucking car! Get out of the fucking car now! Get out of the fucking car! Get out of the fucking car! Get out of the fucking car!
Oh, yeah, fucking shot. Get out. Oh, my God, get out. Hey, fucking shot. Get out. Please get out. No, 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 no. You're in a shot. You better stop. Stop the car now. You're in a shot. Stop the car. You're in a shot. Put my gun here. Stop the car. You're in a shot. You go to. Ah. What are you doing? Get out of the car. All right, stop. Get out of the car. Get out of the fucking car.